Okay, so I want to demonstrate the bundle wrap. It's a very common, very easy technique for applying hair to a hook and keep it all where you want it. Um, the best pattern to demonstrate this with would be the elk haired caddis using the elk hair for the wing. So let's get started. I'm using uh, thread. So the first thing I want to do is attach my copper wire for the ribbing. So I come under the hook and wrap around over the top and away from me with the thread. And what I'm doing is, is as I'm wrapping, I'm pulling my ribbing down and behind that hook. So eventually, as I wrap my thread back, it's going to be tucked underneath that shank. So my ribbing will actually start at the shank. Stop at your hook barb, and then you can see. So now I've got this tag, which I want you to also see it's on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap forward with touching wraps. I'm not looking to do any kind of ribbing with my thread. So I don't want thread over wrapping itself. Just touch it on the way back to the hook eye. So now you can see I'm getting over the end of my tag. And so right about here, I started my thread about two eyes back, and I'm going to leave this hang right there. So what I want to do now is, is I'm going to tie in my hackle, and I'm going to use a furnace hackle. I'm sorry, yeah, furnace hackle. And I'm going to strip the uh, stem from the barbs uh, quite, a, quite a ways. I want a long stem. So now I've got dull side up, and I'm going to tie it in that's comfortable holding it with my left hand, and I'm going to wrap right over the top. And you can see the length of that stem makes it easy. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come around like that, and I'm going to counter spin my thread. And now as I do this, I'm going to pull that stem back a little and come right there in front of it with my thread. And I'm going to go to the back of the stem. So essentially, I've put an X wrap right there on my stem. And I'm, now what I'm going to do is, is notice I'm going to start wrapping back behind the hackle. But I'm bending my stem up. And I'm locking it in. And it will not come out. And I'm going to go ahead and keep wrapping back. I'm going to watch. I'm trying to see where it's at so you can see it in the camera. And I'm just doing a touching wrap all the way back. And it's actually giving me a little bit larger body so I can create my cigar shaped body. And now I'm going to wrap forward. And I'm going to do touching wraps again. Watching that hook point, that's one of the reasons I like turning my vise upside down so I can see how everything is going on and I'm not just guessing at what the other side of my fly looks like. As I wrap to the stem, I touch it, and then I come forward, and now I'm able to tie off my thread. So I like to use a chrome-plated bobbin that I'm not using for actually tying thread as a half-hitch tool. And I'm going to put it right at the stem, right there. Notice no bulk is being made right now. And that's why I'm not using a regular half hitch tool because it does have a tendency to build up my bulk of thread. Plus, I have less control over where I'm going to put my thread, my uh, whip finish. So now I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to kind of set it back because I want to use my rotary. So by tying my hackle in the way I did, notice how the hackle is absolutely square to the front of the fly. And the shiny side is to the top, which is the back, and thus. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap. And what I want to do is, is I'm going to turn my vise opposite of what I normally would do. And I'm going to go ahead and start spacing it out. Now watch your hook point right there as you come around. Now one of the things that I see done all the time is you'll take it and come up to it and then you'll go like this and then come around it. Well, if you don't keep good enough tension on it, your segmentation will move. So be careful. If you have to, put your finger on it like this. 
come around it, and then come back to the other side. Now I'm on the back side. I'm actually right there at that hook shank. And now I'm going to take my wire. And I guess I need to let it go. And come around. Holding my barbules up. I'm going to come right through the back side. Touch my point. Come behind it. Wiggle. Come back. And I'm going to put no less than two wire wraps on that feather onto the hook shank not the body passed it again and now I come up and now from here notice I didn't catch any barbules because I'm going in the opposite direction notice the way I wrapped it my hackle I'm using furnace so you can see it is the candy cane stripe is going in this direction my wire is going to go in the opposite direction and I'm just going to wiggle it, and it's going to cross right through the stem. And it's not going to catch any barbules. And I'm just going to make nice, even, notice the wraps. Right there, you can see it. Here comes the next one across. And I'm just wrapping right through that hackle without capturing any of those barbules. And I'm crossing right over that stem. Wiggle, wiggle, make sure everything's not caught. And now as I come out of it, I'm going to come around and I'm going to stay right there, keeping tension on my wire. And I'm going to stay right in this area and I'm going to give it several wraps. There's not enough weight created by this wire for this dry fly to have no buoyancy. So now I'm going to take my half hitch tool, create a half hitch. And come right in here. And I'm going to set that half hitch wire just like thread. And there we have it. So now I can come in here. Right up. I'm going to slide the anvil of my lower jaw on the stem. And I'm going to come right up to the wraps of wire. And now you can see I didn't capture any. And it's all nice and even all the way around. So now let's go ahead and attach our thread. And we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this video. Which is the bundle wrap. So I'm going to go ahead now and cover my wire. Make sure it stays nice and tight and wrapped in. And I'm going to go ahead and come in and trim out my thread. So now I'm using bleached L care body and um, you can kind of see the length of it nothing shorter this is always a nice length here that you can handle um, without having to lose everything I used a regular hair stacker after I combed it out got all the under fur out and now I've stacked and here's my hair so one of the things that uh, I see a lot of novice do, and that is, is they don't kind of spread it out and pull these long guys out that didn't quite stack. But really what I'm looking for is the butt end of a hair that got turned upside down in the stacker. And these guys are pointing out this way. And I, uh, I've seen a lot of elk haired caddis flies tied with that wing with butts in it you know and that's it's kind of it doesn't hurt anything but takes away from the good looks of this pattern so I'm gonna create a nice square wing here just a smidge past the bend so I I'm holding it and I'm pinching the length of my shank okay pretty much right about there at the eye so when I transfer it I'm actually going to bring my thread back to where the hackle starts which is now making my wing stick out just a little bit further past the back of that hook. So I'm going to come up, pinch my thread, not pulling hard, and I'm going to come right underneath it, come right around top, and I'm going to let you look, and you can see how I'm sliding it right down onto the top of that hook. I come back around, and I try to bring that thread right back at the front part of that hackle, bring it all the way back around again, 
and let's do this one more time. Now it's all locked in. There's my length. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we stay on top. So when you go ahead and pull on your thread to tighten up this loop around your hair, don't pull it at an angle out of the tip of your thread. Pull it where it's straight. You don't want anything from this tip pulling against your thread. In case you pull too hard, you, have, you could break it. So pull it up, and you can see the thread and the head. Come back around and pull down. Let's see if I can shorten this up. You can see now I'm pulling straight down. And I'm keeping this finger here so that nothing moves. I get a nice tent-shaped wing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the hair up. And I'm going to come underneath it once or twice. And now from here, I'm going to look at my wing. It's up on this side of the body. Yep. And this side looks even. So let's do something here. Another bundle wrap around the head. So I'm going to take it. And I'm going to come around underneath. And now I'm going to tighten it up right to the base of that hair. And I'm going to come around again. And now I'm going to pull up on my hair. And I'm going to come underneath that hair. And now I'm going to pull down. And what I've essentially done, notice how I've got my wing in a tent. And now my head's sticking straight up. So now what I'm going to do is before I cut anything... I'm going to go ahead and do my half hitch again. And I'm going to, this time, come right over the top of that hook eye up to the base and drop it. Keeping a nice small head because when you're doing an elk haired caddis, the other thing I've noticed a lot of people do, and that's make a big thread head. Well, I always thought and was told that the, the hair that I've created on the butts is in actuality the head of the fly. So now I've got a nice tent wing. You can see it on both sides. I really like this. And I'm going to come under here and use the angle of my hook. And I'm just going to kind of pinch everything together and come up and pinch and cut a nice straight head. Notice how the head's all locked into place. Because of that wrap, we did capture a little bit of hackle hair. There's where we cut our thread. Nice. So let's do one more thing. So I like using bleached hair, okay? And it kind of gives me this bright wing. Well, what I've started to do, and I highly recommend it, is I'm using these prism colors for a lot of different flies. But this brown, this, this really dark brown on this hair, just go ahead and give it some some of the dark brown. Notice the butts of the uh, elk hair instantly pick up that brown. So just go ahead. I coat it um, with the magic marker, and it really gives me that, that brown wing. Yes, I can come up underneath here. This is a very nice. When you bundle wrap like that, you really are locking in your hair, just like you did that stem with the hackle. When you wrap back with the um, thread. So I'm just going to finish this up. And darken up my head a little bit more. And I'm trying to stay off of the body itself. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a little darkness on the uh, thread head too. But notice how the wing has now lost its bright white look. And it's becoming more of a caddis color, in my opinion. And with that brown body, this thing looks very buggy. So there you have the bundle wrap on an elk haired caddis. That is very durable. But more so than anything, the bundle wrap has kept my wing up on top. It's not going to rotate and slide all around on this body when I'm fishing it. You can, you can actually take your desiccant, uh, not desiccant, but your silicone, and uh, when I fish it, I take my silicone, melt it between my fingers while I'm out on the water, and I work it in the head, and I work it right up here in the hair, and I like my hair standing up just like that, and it gives it that wispy look. That's what I like about the elk hair. gives it a wispy look, 
and then it's shaped in a in a triangle like a tent because I'm pinching when I'm putting on that silicone and it stays like that and then I can go ahead and fish it with the hackle there's two things about hackle notice how it's right there at the point and just a little bit larger than the point the hackle really isn't supporting this fly so much in the water as when you're fishing it the actual L care that, that sticks out both sides kind of like the width of the wing creating the tent is what's going to hold this fly in the square position on the water itself so there you have it the bundle wrap used on an L care caddis thanks for watching please if you find your time go ahead and join our channel sign up and be sure and click to let that thing know to alarm you when I do it.